A while back, I made a video about the Unity input system. In that video, I tried to cover everything that was included in the documentation page, but one of the things I didn't talk about is this checkbox that says Generate C Sharp Class. That's in part because the documentation doesn't go into much detail about it, and because of that, I wasn't entirely sure how to use it. But after getting a lot more experience with the input system, I figured it out, and I actually prefer using the C Sharp class over using the player input component you'd have to use otherwise. So I decided it was time to make a video about it. So make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and we can get started. First we need to make sure that we have the input system package installed. If you haven't installed it in your current project, then go up to Window, Package Manager, and make sure to select Unity Registry from this drop-down menu. And now we can search for Input System, and then just click the Install button. Once the input system is installed, we can create a new input action asset by right-clicking in the Asset folder and selecting Create Input Actions. Now let's open it up and start by creating an action map. Then we can add a few actions to it. I'm going to add a move action and set it as a vector2 with a composite binding. Then I'll add a fire action and set it as a button. This is going to cover the two different ways of using the actions in the script. We also need to make sure to generate the C-sharp class by checking this box in the inspector of our action asset and then clicking apply. Now we can see that there's a new script with the same name as the action asset. This is the name we're going to use to create a new instance of our input actions. Now let's create an avatar controller script. In this video I'm not going to set up a full avatar controller, but you can check out some of my other videos in the description where I go into more detail on how to do that. The first thing we want to do in this script is create an instance of our input actions. So we'll create a variable of type player input actions. If you gave your input action asset a different name, then you'll have to use that name as the type. Now in the awake method, we want to create a new instance of the input actions. And then we need to make sure we enable the action map that we're going to be using. With the action map enabled, let's first look at how we can use the move input. Since we want to constantly be reading the move input, in the update method we can call inputActions.player.move.readValue. We also need to make sure that we specify that we want to read a vector2 since readValue is a generic method. If we save the input into a variable, we can use it anywhere we need to. In this case I'm just going to log the value. Now if I just put this avatar controller script on an empty game object and then test it out, we can see that the current input is getting logged every update. Now let's go back into the script and look at how we can handle the fire action. The first thing we need to do is include the input system by adding the line using unityengine.inputSystem. Now we can create an onFire method that's going to take an input action callback context as a parameter. This is what's passed in by all the input actions. In the onFire method, I'll add another log that says fire. Now all we need to do is to subscribe this method to the fire action. The best place to do this is in the onEnable method. In most cases, you'll probably subscribe to the performed event since it's called whenever the action is performed but you can also subscribe to Cancelled or Started if you need to. In the OnDisable method, you need to make sure you unsubscribe from all of the events that you subscribe to. If you don't do this and then ever end up disabling the object, Unity is going to give you a lot of errors. Now we can go and run the game again, and we'll see that when I press spacebar, we're going to get a message saying that we fired. That's all it takes to use an input action class, and now that I know how to do it, I find that it's a lot more complicated if you try to use the player input component. So if this video helped you, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.